entirely different, and it's a great complement to each other. It's a great contrast. And so went down there, and Chet and I made the album together. It was a great thing that we let a tape machine run and get all our little comments that we made on the side there. And we found that they work very great in the, in the album. How'd you like that? Yeah. Uh, you know, you've been playing a long time, and I admire you very much. Yeah, well, you've been an old timer, too. You yeah, know. You've been my inspiration, but you're playing the damn thing wrong. you got to play a little faster, see? You mean more nervous? So we had a lot of fun making it. And it was fun to record the rehearsal and put that out instead of refining it down to where we hit it perfect and lose all the spontaneity. There's these two huge legends, you know. Uh, either one of them we couldn't do without. Chet had me at a disadvantage because he could copy what I was doing, but I couldn't copy what he was doing. <laughs> We sell albums here at the club, and right to this day, the most wanted is Chester and Lester, and it far exceeds anything that I've ever made with anybody, is because it's it's just uh, it lives forever. Never mind play with Ted Atkins, just to be able to sit in a room and watch him play. It's right arm stuff. That. Thank you, Mark. We'd enjoyed uh, doing the things that we'd done before, little things, and we thought about doing a record. You will see, you're gonna keep all your love to me. We ended up doing this record in each other's houses, really, and uh, did some of it in Chet's house and, and some in a little house that I had in London. In fact, in Chet's house, on that age, went into a bit of a uh, my own little world at, at that age, as a child does. And I just sat with headphones on this little turntable, and I just soaked up as many Chet Atkins songs and things as I could. I decided I'd write him a letter. I, I found this address on the back of an RCA album. You know? It was something along the lines of. You know, dear Mr. Atkins, I've got all your albums, I'm a big fan, and I, I live in this little town called Parks in, in New South Wales, in Australia, and I, I play your stuff. I, I, I probably said that. <laughs> One day I came home from school and my mother met me at the door and she said, go into your room, there's something on the bed for you. And I raced in there and there was this brown envelope with American stamps on it. Oh, wow. So I, I opened the envelope, and it's a beautiful type letter from, from, from Chet, but it's very personal, and he answered all the questions that I had asked. And I was really encouraged by, by that, that, that this guy who we just uh, idolized as, as the god of, of guitar, and, and to take the time to actually write to somebody, that's what blew my mind in the first place. He's been more of a friend than anybody in this business to me because he's always told me the truth. He's always been honest with me. Uh, you know, I can go and play anywhere in the world because I, I learned to play the way I did. That's what I do. I make a living playing this guitar and, and I owe so much to him. I would have to give him a lot of credit for, for just making me feel like, you know, I had something that was unique and different and that was enough to make an artist. There are always going to be key figures who've, who've helped shape the way that we relate to the music. And uh, the music now, the music now has already become the music now because of the way that it was. So I can say uh, in my uh, resume, that I've actually recorded a song with the uh, Nashville master. Uh, and it's a good feeling, you know, to be able to go to my repertoire and pull out a record and say, I bet you didn't know I had this going on.